Very, very happy to see you again, and welcome if this is your first time in the Rescogita's podcast channel. Rescogita, the ecological startup that aims to have an impact on individuals, on society, and on the biosphere. So remember to follow us on www.rescogita.academy. Now, sit back, relax, enjoy. My name is Lorenzo Nava, and I speak on behalf of Rescogita. Today is the second episode of a mini-series of podcasts that we're going to talk about Carl Jung, individuation and archetypes, and to understand how is he considered to be the father of eco-psychology. So, here we go. Archetypes. Hmm. What does it mean? It comes from Greek, as a lot of these words do. And arche means a beginning, an origin, a cause, a primal source, a principle, a rule, a government. And typos, type, also comes from Greek, meaning imprint, image, prototype, order, pattern, and primordial form. Everyone is gathered at the village. It is night, and the large fire is shooting its sparkles to the sky, competing with the stars, while the tense cloth and leather covering shine bright and cast long shadows into the thick forest. All the members of the tribe are gathered. The wise old chief has a seat of honor, and his old eyes, witnesses of countless winters, stare into the flames. Beside him sit the shaman, the medicine man, in charge of calming the spirits and gaining their support in the endeavors of the tribe. Such a complex and enigmatic person he was. The strongest warrior stood a little away, letting the elders sit closer to the fire on the chilling autumn night. Boys and girls were cheerfully playing under the watchful eyes of their parents. This was a scene repeated over and over, from Australia to Greenland, from Asia to America, for hundreds of thousands of years. The same huts and tents, the similar social structures, rituals, roles within human communities. If we consider that modern history as we know it dates back to approximately 12,000 years ago, Homo sapiens has been around for at least 200,000 years. Humans, per se, two million years. We understand that despite the extremely fast evolution and progress we had since the beginning of written history, we also understand that 90% of the time sapiens are spent on Earth, it was a loop of behaviors, social roles, and organization that ensured survival and established coping mechanisms with the natural environment, where our race has lived for 90% of its existence. 99.9% .9 if we consider humanity not just Homo sapiens, which imprinted us a blueprint of roles and ways of being and existence in life, which, as human knowledge speedily progressed, slowly left the conscious mind to enter the realm of the unconscious. And yet, there they are. Carl Jung delivered us with the archetypes theory defining them as ancient symbols and images that are universal and originate in the collective and conscious mind. The other phase of instinct, as those are often physical reactions to the environment and do not necessarily imply consciousness. Whereas archetypes are in the unconscious mind and have a mission to become conscious and make us aware that they exist. This theory or discovery was a milestone on the work done by Jung and all his predecessors, starting from Plato, who thought about a world called Eidos, the world of ideas, a parallel dimension of sorts, where everything exists in its perfect form and is projected onto our world. Therefore, the reality we see is not the object itself, rather its imperfect shadow, a representation which is invisible to the eye, and yet visible to the soul. In 17th century France, Descartes, who greatly influenced Western thought, 
express the concept of res cogito and res materia, the realm of thought and the realm of matter, which was the foundation of Western dualistic thought. The concept of me that exists inside of myself and everything else which exists outside of me. Something eco-psychology today is trying to challenge. Well, if you want to know more about the road that led to the discovery of archetypes, we can advise you to take a read at Kant and his categories, Schopenhauer's and his prototypes, and Darwin, of course. Now, talking about Darwin, let's take a small step into evolution. As humans, and maybe not only, we carry two types of memory. The genetic one, in our DNA, which is individual and carries information from our ancestors, understanding what illnesses we might catch, for example, or chromosomes, or what food we're tolerant to. And then we have the mimetic memory. And those are ideas that spread between uh, people inside a culture that have a symbolic meaning and represent events, learnings, themes, with the task to carry culture, ideas, practices through language, rituals, etc. As opposed to genetic, mimetic memory is collective and follows the same behavioral pattern as genes. They replicate, change, mutate, influenced by the environment, and possibly this is the place where archetypes are. Mimetic cultural influence could have parented the blueprint that exists in our mind of how we as humans interact with society and the world. The village chief from the story above becomes the archetype of the wise old man. The woman nearby can be the archetype of the mother, etc. Since these figures and roles are imprinted in our mimetic memory collectively, and we can perceive them when our unconscious mind awakes, dreaming, fantasizing, trance states, and through our cultural individual filters, should not expect a 20,000 BC chieftain come talk to you. Seriously. And on this note, we would like to make a short health warning. So, if you decide to browse the internet to find out more, you will find a lot of New Age stuff concerning uh, Mother Earth, uh, Field the Goddess, Gaia, up to promoting substances that alterate your psyche to get you to know your archetype. So, first of all, a full list of archetypes does not exist. If it did, it could be hundreds of thousands of pages. Secondly, when an archetype presents itself to you, it will be an internal representation, a metaphor. So, stop expecting angels and gods coming to tell you what to do. Third, consider, since you are reading this, we assume that you are a human being. As such, you likely have um, within you all the archetypes, and not one, which serves you as an ancient spirit and protector. That is in uh, the sections Hocus Pocus and Abracadabra. Right, after the necessary health warning, let's dig in and discover what are archetypes. Okay, we might have a little activity for you. Turn on a lamp or light a candle. Now place your hand in mid-air so you can see its shadow on the wall. Now you're able to see the shape, form and movement of the hand on the wall. And that is not the hand, that is the shadow. That would be a metaphor for an archetype. The hand is the symbolic projection of the hand. Then shadow moves further than the hand itself. And depending on the angle, viewpoint, culture and personal identity, the perception and view, interpretation and perception of that image can vary in endless possible forms. Let us now replace the hand and instead put their behaviors which were developed by our ancestors in order to cope, survive, learn from the natural environment, regardless of geography, ethnicity, and time. Next, we take the images and symbols that were created, that help make sense of reality, and those are repeated 
over and over for millennia. Thus, an archetype is created. Symbols and images have a purpose, that of understanding a complicated reality. Considering the few scientific means they had, that worked quite well for them. Symbols and images over this repetition get imprinted in our mind. All of our minds sliding into comfy unconscious and passed down the whole human race. To what end those symbols and images replicated throughout the human race and cultures? Its constant presence in faiths, myths, and legends among humans, even those very distant from each other. Everywhere we find the figure of wise old men, for example. And this archetype was likely created as a learning metaphor to honor the elders and treasure their experience. Archetypes, though symbols and images explain to us the reality we live in, and how to cope with it. Just remember, archetypes are blueprints, not fixed images. Their representation is different for each one of us. The hand's shadow on the wall, by moving its fingers, can assume the shape of a wolf or butterfly. And only looking closer, we understand this is a hand and not its projected shapes. Two million years is the time span our species has had to evolve and stack archetypes into the unconscious mind. As a cloud or drive, we forgot the password to, and nonetheless continues the story of our evolution, our experience and life journey on this planet. Were we to trace it back, we will see simple and instinctual creatures who lived survived and learned from one another and from the natural world. Now let's take a little break, as psyche is one of those words everybody kn knows, but nobody can really explain. So to simplify things, we are going to take Jung's definition. Psyche is a person's total personality, which includes every thought, behavior, feeling and emotion. Adding that, the psyche is divided in three areas. Consciousness, personal unconscious, and collective unconscious. And these are not just separate entities, rather interconnected and joyfully interacting in a harmonious way, often compensating each other. The conscious personal is the awareness made from all the psychic content you know exists. And a big part of it are the experiences you are aware of consciously. It's a cool place to be, but it's nothing compared to the unconscious personal. In the unconscious personal, every, here everything you are not aware of, unique to everyone. And this is the result of all our experiences, which are either not important, or simply forgotten, or hidden under the rug, because too stressful. And the unconscious is divided in two parts, the second one being Conscious collective. This is extremely deep, deeper than the personal unconscious. We are talking about psychic structures that are not uh, unique but shared with everybody and are very influential concerning our thoughts and behaviors and how we experience the world. If you're looking for archetypes, stop searching. Here they are, comfortable in this unconscious place and influencing in similar, not identical, similar ways. So again, quoting you, an archetype is a primitive mental image inherited from the earliest human ancestors present in the collective unconscious. It's a very, very raw, primordial uh, shape of behavioral pattern. It can be copied or merged into a symbolic representations like synonyms or metaphors. Archetype is an unconscious idea that we humans collectively inherit from our ancestors, and it becomes a pattern of thinking and imagination existing in all our individual minds, 
shaped as images, motifs, and symbols that keep coming back. Take, for example, the sacred texts and myths, themes that recur over and over throughout human cultures. So, we collectively inherit those traits, which motivate our behaviors and influence our understanding of learning as a collective and interconnected process. Let's stress once more that metaphor is an internal language between the ego and the self. And formulating them means consciousness exists and this is something proactive, while instincts are reactive. It was 1919 when Carl Jung drafted the first concept concerning inborn and universal prototypes for ideas existing in the mind and how to interpret and observe them in the psychological process. This process creates a complex, which means memories and interpretations associated with an archetype. Archetypes are psychological organs, just like the physical ones. They function unconsciously, almost automatically when healthy, and grow and develop in an evolutionary manner. Would like again once more to quote Carl Jung. My views about the archaic remnants, which I call archetypes or primordial images, have been constantly criticized by people who lack sufficient knowledge of the psychology of dreams and of mythology. The term archetype is often misunderstood as meaning certain definite mythological images or motives, but these are nothing more than conscious representations. Such variables, representations, cannot be inherited. The archetype is a tendency to form such representations of a motive, representations that can vary a great deal in detail without losing their basic pattern. There are so many, perhaps limitless numbers of archetypes. Jung himself came up with uh, major archetypes, the primordial images like the self, and that is the unification between the ego, the personal and the collective unconscious, the anima or, and animus, the female and male identities, the shadow, the base for life and sexual instincts, the persona, self-representation to the outside, which in turn generate the wise old man, guidance, knowledge, wisdom, the child, longing for innocence, rebirth, salvation, the mother, nurturing, comforting, the father, authority, figure, stern, powerful, the maiden, innocence, desire, and purity, the hero, champion, defender, rescuer, the trickster, deceiver, liar, troublemaker. Therefore, all humans have an unconscious basic understanding of humanity, an inborn collective knowledge about our species existing in the unconscious mind. To have a non-exhaustive idea of archetypes, um, there are many recurring models. And, however, it is limitless. We would like to stress this that it is really limited and uh, limit, limitless. We have 12 primary archetypes, which are based on motivation. And each type has a unique set of values, traits, personality, and meaning. They are grouped in three types according to the uh, common driving force. Uh, Jung divided archetype in three areas as to symbolize the basic human motivation. And each is set uh, with its set of values, meaning that personality and that is ego, soul, and self. With a common driving force, ego area fulfills ego agenda. Soul area fulfills soul agenda. Self area fulfills self agenda. Keep in mind that archetypes, plenty of ways to show themselves by displaying different qualities, archetypal images, change, depending on culture and individuality, of course. Summarizing, so far we understood that archetypes are ancient images 
universal, as applicable to all of humanity, and are the foundation of the collective unconscious. In other words, the other face of instincts. Thank you for listening to us and hope that this small broadcast has tickled your curiosity. And we would like to invite you to join us next week when actually we're going to go deeper into archetypes and look into how those images and projections work. Once more, thank you for listening. See you in the next broadcast. And remember to follow us on www.rescogita.academy. Until then, please do take good care of yourself. Thank you.